So I'm um, very delighted to have uh, Michael Brady from uh, the head of GIS for the New York Fire Department with us. How's everybody doing? My name is Mike Brady. I'm a captain in New York City Fire Department. I'm the commanding officer of the GIS unit. A uh, little background, I have 29 years with the New York City Fire Department, um, about the last nine years with the GIS unit. So the fire department, just in a quick nutshell, uh, a little over 11,000 firefighters, fire officers, 4,300 on the EMS side. The numbers here that I want to just put out really is the number of fires and non-fire emergencies, especially those non-fire emergencies, your steam leaks, your water leaks, your electrical emergencies, stuck elevators, are increasing every year. And that's due to the aging infrastructure right of New York City. Together, EMS and fire responded to over 1.75 million runs on uh, medical runs. So we're a busy organization. So really, everything is about managing risk now, looking at data. So it's all data driven, looking at data for situational awareness, common operating picture that we can share amongst agencies. So, you know, risk is an exposure to the chance of loss. Uh, you know, what is risk? Probability times impact. So FBNY responds to so many different types of incidents. The risk is different for each one. I wouldn't say it's even calculated differently or looked at differently for each one. But again, we're starting to transform from looking at paper data or paper maps to electronic, providing data to our incident commanders for uh, decisions in the field, but more for planning as well. So some of the things that we respond to, some of this, uh, Wendy you know, touched on a little bit, gas explosions, uh, gas main ruptures at construction sites. A lot of this, you know, we respond to now and we are somewhat exposed or at risk when we are going to life safety, safety operations. We're, we're searching exposures, uh, we're bringing our apparatus into the scene and now we're, we're placing apparatus on a block. What's underneath us? Are these mains extending down to where we are? You know, if you, we want to be cognizant of that and not further expand, you know, the exposure for us. Steam pipe explosions have become more prevalent, right, as the uh, infrastructure keeps uh, declining or aging. Uh, and how do we approach these? Again, is the steam pipe running in what direction? Um, what is, you know, the length of the block or where do we want to put our apparatus, where, where can we get in there and do life safety operations? What else is compromised in there with this steam pipe? So you saw a picture that, you know, the, all the electric, the gas, everything's running alongside of this. So has any of that been compromised? And now we're going in to rescue people and putting ourselves at risk. Well, it's always that risk reward kind of formula, formula that you're using as an incident commander, right? So you don't want to risk too much without reward. If there's nobody in there, we're not really going in. If there's people there, we're going to risk more to pull them out. Water main breaks are becoming prevalent as well. And again, we don't know where the water main is running or where the shutoffs are possibly to try and knock that water flow down until DEP can get there or somebody can get there. So again, like I said, when you're looking at these craters or these holes and what's there, you know, what other utilities share that space? Is anything compromised? Is there a gas leak now or is electric, electric under there and being compromised? And now you have, you know, your ignition source. These conduits that go from the, uh, the street into the buildings to bring electric and utilities, they're a raceway now for CO2, smoke, water. So we have to get into all these buildings and inspect all these exposures. So it's not just infrastructure data or underground data that we're looking for, you know, we house a lot of uh, buildings data. So we house about 25, 2,600 building floor plans right now that are required through local law 26. So again, it all leads back to life safety and property protection and trying to minimize injuries and fatalities. So when we look at managing risk, a lot of it is getting data beforehand. Can we put together packages for incident commanders for pre-plans, for tabletop exercises, especially for certain areas of the city, certain buildings? Um, we want to have 
pre-plans available for when something happens. Could be a steam explosion, could be a water leak, could be anything for a Grand Central Station or a Penn Station. You know, we want to drill on this and become efficient and proficient, really, at what our standard operating procedure is going to be. So looking at all the data really does that for us. And again, what's preparation, really? It's always a continuous cycle, right? So you are getting your data, you're training, you're evaluating, then you're deploying it, and then you're evaluating and training, and you're always tweaking it. So GIS in the fire department really has come a long way from just making paper maps to supply to the units is really the analytical side. So if the data can be analyzed and visualized, you can send it out to the field to make better decisions. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words. So how do we get this data out or, or manage it with our incident commanders? So we have a, a pretty robust, robust operations center. And again, they are 24-7. Uh, they manage large-scale incidents, but they provide this data out to incident commanders or, or packages at times, and it's through our CRIMS map. So again, paper for us is never going to go away, but we're taking all this data now, publishing services, and providing it to all of our end users via desktops or mobile devices. So again, one data source, an iPad, a smartphone, we have incident commanders that can pull this up. So just real quick, one of the layers that we have that shows some of the you know, sub-structured or the infrastructure on the ground is the uh, Buckeye pipeline. So we're lucky that Buckeye shares this data with us. And we know where the pipeline runs, where the valves are, and actually we have uh, SOP for each valve. And as you click on the map, you'll get that information in the pop-up. And our ops center is able to either print that out in a PDF or the incident command is able to just pull it up on an iPad. And again, some of the other pipeline data um, that we managed to get T-SPAN, so the, all the natural gas, the gasoline and aviation fuel from the Buckeye pipeline. To, you know, that's important for us. Some of the other data, like, you know, as far as standing, standard operating procedures or pre-plans, we call the pre-incident guides. So that's us. We're documenting for buildings or locations and putting that package together so we know when we get there. It's kind of out of the ordinary for us, but gives us a guideline for operating. So those are just a couple of pieces of data that we have in our map. Again, we have the subway stations. We have those uh, plans that OEM digitized, and we're able to pull those up as attachments in the map. So, you know, my, my want or my ask really for a, a emergency responder or a first responders are the more data we have at our disposal, the better decisions we can make, the better we can operate safely. Hopefully that data becomes available somewhat to large projects or, you know, the smaller construction companies when they're marking out utilities. Is there a better way to verify data and avoid some of these ruptures or when they're digging and they rupture a gas main, now it just becomes problematic for us responding because we're at risk. The community's at risk. It's more costly to repair. So it just will you know, benefit everybody. So going forward, again, um, it would be nice one day to, to kind of see this, right? Be able to look at it digitally, both on or on paper, and pre-plan for it around there, you know, at a Barclays Center, uh, an MSG, what are the utilities around there? First time, you know, when I was in GISN, you had a building collapse. The chief comes in right away and says, hey, can you give me a, a map that shows all the utilities underground in front of the building? I'm like, I wish I could. <laughs> so again, when there's compromise of infrastructure, what else is compromised alongside of it? We don't know really, you know, so we try and operate as safely as we can based on our experience, um, but backing that up with data or, you know, this situational awareness for us to provide a good size up, but more that common operating picture amongst agencies so that we're all on the same page. Um, and again, the end goal is really to reduce the, those types of responses, reduce the damages and the costs associated with it, but more importantly, to drive down, you know, what fatalities and injuries are associated with these projects as well. Um, and I will say, Aside from just the utility data, our IMT is actually experimenting with some LIDAR 
technology for underground tunnels. So if there's a, a collapse, they could bring in a portable device, and now we can get that 3D image of what this tunnel looks like and the collapsed portion or what's there. So, you know, it, it, it's really pretty cool, I mean, going forward. And everybody knows in New York City, it's baby steps. So um, that's all I have. That's my information. If anybody uh, has any questions or... So we have a question from the audience. Uh, what are the top three data sets that you wish you had that you don't have right now? Um, probably the gas uh, mains, the steam mains. Water, we do have access to somewhat, uh, especially during emergencies, the water and sewer. But on an everyday basis, we don't really have, you know, our hands on this data. The, oh, the other utilities map that you mentioned uh, for the CRIMS map, do you have uh, networks citywide of those layers of information other than the gas? So the gas mains we get through, it's basically a group that uh, Buckeye or all, all these uh, providers share their data with and right. as an emergency responding agency. Yeah. We get access to that. So Transco, Buckeye, Keyspan, it's limited, but it's better than nothing. Uh, Con Ed data, you know, really we just scraping from their site mm -hmm. outages based on their networks or their uh, their grids. So, you know, we do have a situational awareness of what the power outages look like in the, in the city at any time. But it's the same information that the public has. Right. And, of course, not citywide, piece by piece, as you need it. Um, well, it is, it's a citywide layer. Oh, it is? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. So we cut in front of Puck. Puckeye comes from New Jersey, basically through Staten Island, all the way to JFK and LaGuardia. So we have that whole, you know, run of uh, data. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir.